So here is the data gravity discovery series. I am logged in as a storage administrator. Um, so for the purpose of this demo, you're going to see all the functionality. Again, we do have role-based uh, profiling, so I could log in as an auditor, I could log in as an end user. I understand that there's tweets already coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Walt doing it with? <laughs> Do not answer. <laughs> so you can see from our simplified. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna die laughing, here. and I, I created it. So um, this is our interface. When you log in, you get three simple tabs: discover, storage, and system. Those functionalities obviously define the aspects of our product. System tab is where you get all the general storage administration you would expect. You know, obviously we have a breakout there for virtualization credentials. Uh, when, when I mentioned we're a unified storage platform, we're also virtualization aware. You'll see through the demo any VMs that run on data gravity get treated as independent first class objects. In our storage drawer, the unified storage, the protocols that we support today, SIFs, NFS, iSCSI, VMware data stores today. And lastly, we'll go in and cover Discover. We'll walk through how you search on our product, how you look at data that's trending over time, and how you process activities. So let's start with the marketing share here. When I log into a share and bring up our landing page, you get this unique view that's tied into the data gravity uh, system made up of what we call discovery tiles. The first discovery tile here is Mount Point Activity. Because I have the content and context, I can actually tell you what kind of data is coming in as it's updates, modifications, deletes, changes to the system. You get a real-time view of I.O. performance that's coming into the platform, and then you get a unique view down here of a tag cloud. Now, in that tag, cloud size does matter. So if you're playing along with Chris Wall, <laughs> there is uh, there a lot of activity that's happening there with Chris. If I browse into that discovery tile, you get the unique tenant of our always-on audit trail. I can literally ask questions of who's doing what and where. So since Chris decided not to join us, maybe he's taking a job somewhere else. <laughs> Did he walk out the door and data dump us before he left? Sure looks like it. Right. Anything that you want to ask questions of, reads, modifications, access, deletes, ACL changes, we capture all that. That information can be then exported as well to send off for legal hold or whatever you need to do, possibly with HR. Right? You'll see this activity trail come back throughout the demo, though. It's a unique functional tenant of the data gravity platform. Secondly, I told you we reinvented the snapshot. We call it discovery points. A discovery point in the data gravity platform is essentially a backup that happens on fault isolated disks. Why that happens, you'll get an understanding of when we go through the architecture. But as part of that, we also reinvented how you define data protection policies. I can come in and define a new policy here for Tech Field Day. And I get my typical grandfather, father, son, backup methodology with my retention schedule. One of the cool things that we can do, being a storage platform offering data protection natively built in, is we can also do data protection based on rate of change. Right? So I can say take a backup every four hours, but if 3% of new data comes in, take a backup. I can get very granular and say if 5 mega new data comes in, take a backup. The possibilities here allow you to be really flexible and manage your business and protect it based on the data and activity that's happening on the system. Now you may ask, why is that important? Anybody here of CryptoLocker? Oh, Anybody been hit by it, wants to admit it? A few people, that's great. This third person in the room didn't raise their hand, which I'm glad. Uh, <laughs> but so this lockbox obviously was provisioned for our friend Steve Foskett. Steve wanted to go out and he wanted to record a lot of his activities that has happened at uh, Tech Field Day so far. <laughs> One of my favorites, obviously, being this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what was going on there, but I'll get the story later. <laughs> but data is protected. So data was copied in, a rate of change kicked off, we protected that data. Our friend Chris Wall comes along. 
Chris logs in, has CryptoLocker on his machine, that same wonderful image. Now it looks like that, right? He could be asked for some ransom. The presence of a CryptoLocker virus is obviously a ransom file. Get your files back. Owned by Chris Wall. What does Chris want? Chris wants bitcoins. <laughs> yeah. Problem there is we don't want to pay Chris bitcoins, right? Anybody who does send bitcoins at the live address will donate to charity. Uh, <laughs> but because we have the protection of the data gravity system, I can go back to that last known good discovery point and just instantly recover the files for Steve. And it literally is as simple as selecting the files that I want to bring back. I could help if I hit the right key. And doing a restore. No money paid, kicked off with a rate of change protection policy, and, and Steve has all of his wonderful dinner pictures back. Right? Does Pretty that overwrite cool. the, the old? Files then, or does it put them in a separate? Well, CryptoLocker obviously changes the files and deletes the original, so you don't have a copy of it. So that brought it back with the original name. If the file already existed, it actually would date timestamp it. So that's a great question. I just obviously did a recovery in place. If I come back in and go look at just the deleted files on on this side of it, because I've already recovered those files, if I were to recover it again, it'll date timestamp that uh, in place on the file system. Now, does that tie in with any other backup software? So, like, if I have an existing backup infrastructure, can I integrate that with this discovery point so I can do essentially zero impact offsite backups or zero impact archiving? Sure, absolutely. Which ones do you support? Or is it any of them? Or is Much it any of them. Um, so, you have the option of bringing a discovery point online and a read only uh, clone, okay. taking your backup copy, running it against that. It's not on the primary side, not taking primary I.O., and you, you can back up against that. Now, the catalog and management of that won't be in our database. I won't know that you've backed it up with a third-party product, okay. but you can absolutely do that, no problem. And is that something that can also be triggered with an API to bring that discovery point online? Um, it can be scripted today, but there's not an API per se, okay. like a REST so, API. But, but there is something I can use to automate that process. Uh, yeah, you, okay. you can. I mean, it's, uh, um, we do find that people who still run traditional backups, once they get comfortable with data gravity, they use the built-in protection. Okay. You can't beat the zero impact backup. You can't beat the speed of recovery. You know, I came from a backup company before I came to data gravity. You know, we had a product that we've, we touted instant uh, recovery in it. Mm -hmm. It was really near instant. This is truly instant. Uh, that was 50K worth of data. If it was five terabytes, it still comes back that fast. Right. We represent that behind the scenes and then lazy fill copy it for the user, but they get the experience of it being immediately back. Then one other question too, since everything is in this uh, 6U appliance, do you have replication to another appliance that might be at another site? Not at the current time, but it's a pretty good thing, cool thing that we're doing uh, Tech Field Day again later this year, right? <laughs> 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 All right, so any questions there? That's how we Just help. Be careful. We do integrate with Zerto, Veeam, yeah, and a bunch of the other backup vendors and we and replication vendors. So uh, we do have it. It's just with partnerships right That's now. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Third, third party ecosystem has been really great to us. Um, as Paula said, Zerto, Veeam, uh, Visa Replication, um, you know, you know. vice versa. There's a bunch of different applications you can run. And uh, out on our blogs and on our website, we have tech papers to help you do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some of you know my colleague, Mike, Michael White. Michael White has uh, um, done numerous blog posts as well on, on that topic, both on data gravity and, uh, and uh, notes from MikeWhite.net. Um, so, you know, feel free to ask us questions too. Be happy to answer them. Please, please uh, let us know. Great. So, I showed you recovery, obviously. That went back into a SIF share. <clears throat> I told you we're virtualization aware, right? So any virtual machine that runs on the data gravity platform, we do the data protection instantly, just like we do for the SIF share. We then take and process that virtual machine. We still give you that same activity trail. 
to give you the same file level view, but obviously I also give you the same kind of recovery. Right? So I've got a virtual machine here, my bacon machine. But I lost some precious artwork, right? Who do you, who do you think did that? Chris Wall. Chris Wall. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily for me, I'm protecting this virtual machine because it's running on data gravity. I can literally come in and save my bacon. Uh, if I could type. <laughs> and then the only difference is, is recovery into a virtual machine, you're going to authenticate. We pass those credentials on into the virtual machine and complete the re recovery. But I'll give that to you here. It's because you can't replace the, the, the file on block storage without telling the VM about it? Uh, part of it's because we use the API from the virtualization vendor to actually restore back into that virtual machine. That way we don't have to have network uh, transparency into the virtual machine. We can do a networkless restore. But the recovery happened, and obviously if I go back in, my bacon Kevin bacon's back. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Yep. It was in us. All included, right? Didn't pay for anything different. Instant protection, instant recovery. Well, it doesn't matter what it's on with data gravity. So, in fair disclosure, I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm a reforming CIO, right? Still working through the 12-step program, making amends. But uh, one of the problems I always had, you know, in that role is people would come knock on the door, say, I need to buy more storage. The natural question you ask in that role is what happened to the last 96 terabytes we had? The answer is always, I don't know, right? Uh, we wanted to solve that with data gravity. So we built file analytics right into the product. We can tell you at a glance, the minute data starts landing on data gravity, who owns what, who your most active users are, how much data you have laying around that you probably could clean up. And then as you drill into data that lives on us, we start giving the data demographics around that. So for example, if I go into the public share here, I can quickly see who my top users are. Amy's obviously our space hog. Sorry, Amy. Sorry. It's okay. It's probably pictures of Chris Wall. Is that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also can go in, and as you see down here beside the tag cloud, we have this view of dormancy of data. I can see how much data I have laying around that hasn't been touched, used, or accessed by anybody in the last 12 months. I can start asking questions, do I need to keep that? Or can I move that off into the cloud, into cheaper storage? I can also go in and facet that. Obviously, we know Chris doesn't work here anymore, right? I have all this data laying around from Chris I probably could get rid of or reassign to somebody. The other side of it is we have the ability to look at data based on the data demographics of it. What the distribution of it is, what the type of data is, the size of the data is. I can see how data is growing over time as well. I, if I had a big spike of consumption of data, I could see from an audio video perspective that you know, maybe somebody just dumped their entire iTunes collection on us. We had that perspective. And lastly, we have up there in the top, we tag and classify data. A lot of people say they search through backup data. They're indexing the file names. We actually do file content. So if someone's saving documents out there with credit card numbers in it, we know that, right? PII information's bad. We can verify the presence of that. We can go on a shopping spree, right? All because we have the ability to look in that content. <coughs> and lastly here, we have the ability to uh, search for data. So all of you who have been tweeting along, I just refreshed that. There's some fresh new tweets that are coming in. We went out and looked to see who's talking about our friend Chris Wall, right? Uh, people welcoming him to the rubric team. I thought it should be something about data gravity. Uh, <laughs> but that content's there. It's being indexed. You had the early search on that. And lastly, we can search and look at that from a perspective of who's looking at and consuming that data, uh, relevancy view. But then we can also trend it. I can look over time and see where that inflection of data is happening. And obviously, 
there's been a huge spike in talking about VFD5. I don't remember when that event was happening, right? So, at a very high level there, in you know, 20 minutes, flash accelerated primary storage, deduplicated archive storage, instant data protection with truly instant recovery with no impact to your backup window, the ability to quantify and look inside any data, find the activity, activity stream of who is doing what, when, and where, and being able to search through that data, extend it across your entire organization. That is the Data Gravity to Discovery series. I'd be happy to answer any questions there before we move into the next segment. Any questions from Twitter coming in? Um, Roger Lund says, you do so well with SIF, SMB, do you have tools to help users migrate to your platform or partner with any? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So um, they're, they're not just one tool. You can use tools like vice versa, Syncback Pro. RoboCopy, there's a lot of tools that help you bring data in. The big value of bringing data to data gravity from a SIF share perspective is bringing it over with the last access modification creation times so that you get that instant view of file analytics that I showed you. So you can start answering that questions of what data I have laying around that possibly could get cleaned up. Um, we do work with partners. We're 100% uh, partner-driven organization, so um, our partners do help with that. But uh, it doesn't preclude a customer from being able to do it as well. Um, from a virtualization perspective, it's as simple as provisioning a VMware data store, attaching that to your virtualized environment, storage remotioning onto data gravity. Now for the virtualization stuff, do you look inside the VM itself natively to get this analytics information or is an agent or something else required to make that work? Agent's not required, but we do have a data gravity intelligence service that helps us get the name resolution because I want to be able to tell you that Sean just... Uh, you know, uh, interacted on with these files, right? If we didn't have that resolution, we'd be able to tell you those files were touched. I wouldn't have um, the SID to uh, user mapping. Okay. But we do crack the virtual machines at the point of storage. We crack the VMDK. We look inside the NTFS file system from there and then and look at it from the point of storage up. It's not like we have to leverage change block tracking or, or, or data protection API to do that. We are storage. We, we already own the blocks. We know it's what the running VM. It's not. A, it's not a copy of that. That's that correct. It's running virtual machine. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I don't have to do anything. I didn't have to wait 15 minutes. Copy it across the network. Put it into an appliance and start looking through it or anything like that. It's running natively built into the storage. You get all this in in, in the single appliance that is your primary storage. Mm 